Hey there, love. This is Infinity, and this is my kalimba. If you're unfamiliar with what a kalimba is, there's a kalimba. They come in all sorts of shapes and sizes and different amounts of keys, but you literally need no skill to play it or use it. You just go with flow. You can learn songs, of course. Um, there's keys and everything, but I have no interest in that. I was guided to this uh, about a year, year and a half ago. Truth be told, I've really neglected it and myself enjoying it for way too long and feeling uh, like just connecting with that and the vibrations just feels really nice uh, to play with that anyway so Expect to see my Columbus. We open up videos. It just kind of, it's like a nice little air freshener <laughs> of energies here. And um, I encourage you to get one. They're not expensive. Um, I got this beautiful piece. Um, it's made from birch wood and um, of course it has that butterfly on it. I think I got this for under $30 on Amazon. So they're not expensive. And if you're into frequency and vibrations and raising your vibration, something like this is just as important as, uh, as anything else. And um, crystals or candles or incense and, and essential oils and all that good stuff. Anyway, thank you for joining me so much. I, I really, really appreciate you coming and checking out this video. Um, I have a feeling it's going to be a long one. So I know that people kind of, some people have an aversion to longer videos. Um, you know, whatever. It is what it is. <laughs> I try to go as fast as I can. Obviously, I have other things to do too. But I'm also very free flow and in the moment and guided to give whatever I'm doing the attention that, that it deserves without, you know, cutting things off if we still need more to, to come out. So anyway, this video and uh, these energies that we're getting into is for the Divine Masculine for March 2021. I'm really excited about this. And and these energies are for anybody. It doesn't, it's not like just males or just females for the divine feminine. We both have these sides to us and these aspects to us. And um, oh, I can't see my can't see my lever drawing. There we go. Um, uh, and so we uh, we need to think about those different blendings of energy the the when you think of divine feminine divine masculine i think an easy way to put kind of to get that because i think for some people it's like what does that actually mean so if you think about your family think about like grandmother mother sister aunt um that kind of you know the energy that surrounds what is what is woman what is female um the the energies around uh, being emotional, uh, nurturing, uh, psychic and intuitive and into aesthetics and things like that. There's some weird noise going on. <laughs> it just keeps making this noise. Okay. So I keep going like this. There's a noise over here. I don't know what it is, but anyway, sorry. Um, and then divine masculine, we have, you know, the, or like logical, strong, assertive, um, that paternal energy, father, brother, uncle, grandfather, enter those types of energies. Um, to me, it's just kind of easier to think of it in like terms of family, like what those different types of aspects of people, the archetypes of, of what we know to be female, what we know to be male. And of course, those are kind of generals, but it just helps just to understand the energy. We have more, uh, you know, there's feminine aspects of us. Uh, and then we have the more, the more, uh, masculine aspects of us and we all do some have more more than the other of course 
but everybody has those aspects. And the idea is to have them in balance. So one isn't pulling more than the other. You think about the chariot card, there's the chariot. So there's, there's the person that is controlling the chariot that's supposed to be you. And the horses are white and black, male and female, yin and yang, high and low, cold and hot. Um, the, um, the vessel and what goes into the vessel to create life, that sort of thing. The very, the different types of energies that we have there, the inner, and then it's that, that circular energy, that pointed energy, you know it's you know yeah it could be very phallic <laughs> but but we all have those and so anyway with it with the chariot we want to think about taking those two horses and blending them together not trying to manage two horses at once that's the true meaning of of really having our divine feminine divine masculine aspects in balance not half half but it's blend blend same same all inside so we're in balance the idea is as we ascend as we become more enlightened as we come into our soul and our soul purpose our mission um start checking off boxes of the things that we're supposed to learn and figure out about our lives and our missions so we can continue so we don't repeat repeat like a video game like oh can't pass the level gotta start over can't pass the level gotta start over gotta figure out like maybe i gotta go a different way we played a video game you keep trying to go the same way and it's just like you cannot do it and you're like huh is there a different way to this or maybe there's a cheat code but you go let's try something else and and it's always um better and easier if we have if we have you know guidance of course if we can see from a higher perspective so we're not just that first person just trying to get through every little thing that's just right in front of our faces we can you know satellite out and look down at the video game and go oh well i can see why we won't want to go that way that'll just take us back in a loop the way we've been before we gotta go this way even though it seems a little odd and weird and takes us out of our comfort zone let's say um makes us really expand and express and and really fully come into ourselves and accept ourselves and trust me when i say you can think that you have but there's still more to that at every level we're we're like an onion peeling back the layers as we go forward and we go oh we got to another layer this is fantastic i'm not like i was before i've you know come so far and you have but there's further to go and so um so there's always room for the discovery there's always room for understanding and guidance on the trip of life okay so starting here from the top i want you to um think of a number one through ten and an element or uh, fire water earth air and tech technology hopefully you um you watched my full moon oracle reading part part one to the part two meditation where it, uh, i i facilitate a meditation um and let's just start let's just back up a little bit if i'm new to you hi i'm infinity and i am a let's just keep it simple shaman and mystic healer psychic medical medium um and messenger i have a lot of titles but it gets really to be a mouthful so whatever i do a lot i connect with the divine i um channel different divine beings archangels ascended masters and gaia herself i've been doing this for a few years now she comes through in um my my meditations so um so she's actually the one who really designs where we go and what we do in astral we, we i do get different components coming in from from different um my counterpart sometimes but really truly she's the one because we have to think we are her babies she's our mother and she is so very she feels she is so very responsible for everything every form of life on her on her body and we being that highest life form it, it, as far as we know um the dominant if you will um 3d life form and and really that humanity is the 
is the life form of this of this planet bringing it into and through the different chapters of um consciousness and mother earth gaia is a big part of that and so her her elements are 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 our elements our elements are her elements so fire water earth and air and then in that meditation well she came to me about a day before and started talking to me about this technology thing started saying you you all have to start thinking about technology being an element and that it's a natural thing even though it you all look at it as being unnatural electricity is natural your creations are natural they're not artificial, they're natural, and they are, um, and technology is really at the center of, of us connecting. So she goes into this whole thing. So I really, really hope that you have done the meditation by now, you have listened to it. If you haven't, feel free to stop this, go to that, go do the meditation, come back, whatever, or whatever order you want to do it in, but she does get really into it. And, um, it's better coming from her than coming from me. Trust me. Um, even though it's my voice may sound like me, it's, it's there. It's not me. It's her. I never would have thought of technology as an element, but the way she just makes you understand what that, why, and where she comes from and what we're supposed to be thinking about it with us now. And it's been a long time since we've had technology. Well, you know, time is relative, but several, it's not like tech just showed up two days ago. We've been in this, in this new paradigm of technology that we hadn't been in for, you know, millennia, millennia, millennia. So a very, very long time. I mean, we have to go way, way, way back Atlantis, Lumeria um, time periods to, to get into that. And it was very different. It was a, it wasn't tech like it is now either. So this is truly the first, the first type of, of uh, the first time for us to have something like this, a global network of le electronic equipment that mostly everybody has with them attached to them, just like the, the water, fire, earth, and air that's attached in with all of us. So anyway, please check that out if you haven't already. Please do the meditation at any time. You know, any of my meditations that I facilitate, they're meant to do at any time. So if you're around at the time, of course, do it at the time. But if you come across one of my meditations, you're like, wow, that sounds and looks really cool, but it was two months ago for that new moon. So what? Time is not linear. It goes like this. <laughs> and you at this point in time, I'm uh, coming into awareness of a, of a meditation and, and a portal or whatever that we worked on here. When you do it in this day, that energy is still connected to that very first time. We didn't know that, but it, but it is, was, <laughs> it can get a little twisty in your head, but trust me, just as potent, just as effective, just as healing, just as clearing, just as just as uh, important for guidance and whatever else. Okay, so back to the elements, fire, water, earth, air, and tech. So tech being our next, our new element that we're supposed to be thinking of. And the cool thing with tech is that it, it's with all of us, all of us. So the different signs have fire, water, earth, air, but when we see um, tech, we wanna see tech there in the center. So there is our elemental connections. Spirit is at the top, air, earth, fire, water with our different, you know, our human head, arms, legs, our five pointed star. And this is also connected, I should tell you, with the, uh, with the tree of life. And so this is going to be a tree of life elemental. Um, well, you already know this with the title, but a tree of life elemental uh, reading that we're going to do. So first off, before we move on, I want you to think of an element. It can be your sun sign, your moon sign, your earth sign, or earth sign, sun, <laughs> sun moon, um, or ascending sign, and and or or not. You could just be like whatever. This is what I'm feeling right now. Just think about the month of uh, March coming up. And um, and just whatever comes to mind first, whatever you're feeling, whatever whatever you know, 
And of course, you're going to pay attention to the actual, your actual signs, whether it's sun, moon, or rising with the points on the stars. We go through this. And okay, so you picked your element. Now pick number one through 10. And no, this isn't pick a card. Um, this is just so once we get through this, and I'm going to show you here in a minute, this is the um, spread we're going to do. This is what was just channeled to me. And I just worked on setting this all up. Um, it came to me um, late this morning or, or last night that we're going to do a tree of life spread. Um, a little tweet for us here, but a tree of life spread, uh, which is based on the Hermetic Tarot or the Toth Tarot, it's all based on the tree of life and the Kabbalah or, or the Kabbalah uh, Tarot, which is what the Golden Dawn Tarot is based on. And, uh, and so I take this and I'm going to read. I'm going to read from this little section here in a second, but this is what we're going to get into for our spread. So the top three cards are going to be what your soul wants you to know. And that's your top spirit. Like I told you, like you saw here spirit. So what your soul wants you to know, and then mind, body, energy. So a little insight there. And then what are we dealing with need to focus on? And again, we have our, so we have our air, uh, earth, and then water, fire, that tech in the middle, like I showed you with here. So they're in the exact same positions. And then here at the bottom, our animal instincts. So just our, our just base animal instincts. And, and we all have them. And um, so it's just that the the energy that's surrounding that and then here at the bottom program issue trigger to overcome or heal will be our card number 10 and so um so whatever number you pick is going to correspond with you know the different placement of the tree of life so this would be our tree of life and uh the, that placement and so this will just give you a little bit more insight when we get into it um, let me go here. So now I want to read you just this little ex excerpt from um, excerpt, excerpt, whatever, from this book. And again, this is the Kabbalistic Tarot, a textbook of mystical philosophy by Robert Wang. And if you really want to deep dive into tarot and what everything means, and I'm going to be using two hermetic tarot um, tarot decks today. So it's going to tie, tie in. So this is definitely a deeper dive. I do like to get deep with some tarot, especially if I'm guided to do that for very specific readings. Um, so we're going to be using, uh, the, uh, one or two, or maybe both of these, uh, uh, hermetic tarot. This is the Toast Tarot by Crowley. And this is the Hermetic Tarot by, um, um, Joffrey Dodson, and it's all in black and white. Every single card's in black and white. They're really, really cool. Um, and so I was actually guided to get that deck when I was guided to, to get this book, but they don't they don't actually come together, but I was, that's what I was guided to get. And then a while later, not too long ago, I was guided to get the, um, the Crowley Toth Tarot. That one's definitely more popular, I think. Um, but anyway, then we also have the uh, Wild Unknown Tarot and then the uh, Shadowscapes Tarot. So we'll see how that all plays out. But let me um, read this to you. This is, um, there's this whole section about the tree of life and it's very, it can be very, very, it's, um, It gets, it gets deep. It's connected to the Kabbalah and the whole tree of life thing that, that is there. So, I mean, I, I was just guided. Um, this is kind of the, the path of the tree of life. And, um, and it's called the, uh, this one here, the fiery, the path of the flaming sword. So as we go through our um, our journey, the different sephira, the different circles here on the tree of life mean a specific, a specific point in our evolution. And they also mean there's a lot of overlapping, but they also have placement for, for like our, uh, for the actual tarot. Um, so if you see here, 
where it shows queen, kings, princesses. And then there's just, there's just a lot of overlap. It's a lot to digest um, and to understand, but it, but once you do it, it really kind of, it really helps a little bit more information to process when it comes to the tarot. Of course, you can sometimes go as deep or as shallow as you want to with tarot. Where is that page now that I, I'm like, where are you? Sorry, bear with me. I'm almost, seriously? <laughs> there it is. Oh, I thought it was before the diagrams. Okay. The tree of life imposes a defining pattern on qualities of the personality and work of personal development, which is already in progress. Thus, one feels affinities or ant anti antagonisms antonisms or antagonisms there we go wow affinities or antagonisms towards certain tarot cards depending upon the extent to which their lessons have already been learned by purposefully uh, studying and using the past we take hold of our own spiritual learning process forcing attention to many important paths which we might otherwise choose to avoid the fact that the, the Kabbalah demands attention to all parts of the given whole makes it an ideal system for intentionally affecting spiritual growth. It demonstrates that we exist in a rational and graded system. It su suggests where we come from and where we go. There is none of the vagueness of other systems. And as the symbolic parts of the human body are related to the tree, so are the various aspects of the soul. We go from the lowest aspect of manifestation to the highest, the uh, yet Yekida and of Kether, the primal point to which we aspire. And all major religions teach that it is our heritage to return to some primal point from which we evolved. This is expressed as heaven or nirvana or whatever is the ultimate happy state promised by the faith. But of all the uh, metaphysical systems available in the West, only the Kabbalah suggests the extent to which we progress through a natural course of development, as if through a school moving from one grade to the other. So uh, there we go. Of course, it gets into a lot more there, but we're going to leave it there for now. And and then get get into this and see what we get. I'm really, really excited. So I hope that that, that kind of helps us to understand. So this, so what we have here, what I was, what I was guided to design here is, um, is a tree of life um, with information that we can use now going as I go through this read to help us at the top, what our soul wants us to know about mind, body, energy, and what we are dealing with and needing to focus on and how that might relate to earth, water, air, tech, fire, um, and, and, you know, the whole deal there. And then our program issue trigger and uh, that we need to overcome or, or really think about or, or be aware of that may come up this month. We'll just have to see how that goes for us here. This is the first time that I've ever done this. I was just, guided, like I said, I was just guided to, um, to this um, and I'm really excited about it. So that's, the, so that's all tarot. Now, put that on pause <laughs> and we're gonna get into the Oracle before we get into the tarot. And I'm just gonna see, because I'm like, what tarot or what, or I already got the tarot, I've got four possible decks for our tarot, so we'll see what happens there. But then I heard we have a few possibles for our, um, for our oracle and like they all sounded good and there's a lot of energy coming from all of them so we're i'm going to just start with my this is my pendulum well one of them this is my um, rose quartz or my sorry my pink quartz crystal i should say a pink quartz crystal and so i'm going to go over the different oracles and if it starts it's, it's either going to say neutral or it's going to start going to the yes or the no, which is counterclockwise, or no is counterclockwise, and yes, it's clockwise. So as you can see here, for and it's my perspective, not your perspective. So for me, this is going in counterclockwise direction. So we're not going to the abundance or the angels of abundance oracle. Let's see what we get here for the 
um, Archangel Oracle. We're going here, yes or no. And no for that one too. Ooh. And let's go to Moonology, see if we're gonna get into Moonology. Yes or no. And I'm getting a yes, see that? Getting a yes going in the clockwise direction. So we're going to go to the Moonology. Let's grab us on the way. Okay, see, easy, easy. Let's get some smokey smokes going here. And we're going to clear these cards again. Thank you so much for being here, checking out this, uh, this reading for the divine masculine aspects, either however, which way for yourself, or if you consider somebody to be more the divine masculine, if you want to get dive into your divine masculine energies, however you're feeling this, and this is for the entire month, for the entire month of March. So we're not going to do another one mid-month. Lord. <laughs> wow. Okay. Bear with me. Okay. You know, when you drop cards and you think you got a poem and you realize later you didn't, you're like, huh, wonder why that didn't need to be there. <laughs> okay. So let's get into it with our full deck of cards here. Hopefully they're all here. No, they're all here. They're all here. <laughs> But I'm not gonna lie, I have done I have done reads where I thought I had all my cards and then later on I find that I didn't. And I know that that's happened to everybody. I'm sure it's happened to people. Wow, four cards coming up right at once. First card, time to give rather than take. Divine masculine, time to give rather than take. New moon in Virgo, time to give rather than take. Next, surrender to the divine. Well, that's what we're doing here, right? Surrender to the divine. I love it. Next, we have believe in the impossible. Divine masculine energy. Yes, believe in the impossible. I think that's a really good one for divine masculine. Not to say that there that you know there aren't divine masculine, either male, female, or whatever, that don't have that more like falling into um the mystical and the spiritual obviously there is obviously but i think if we're looking just kind of generally um women females are a little bit more you know easy to go to let into fantasy i think um it's just kind of the way that we're built and next card don't let pride get in your way don't let pride get in this is really funny. These are really good cards for divine masculine, aren't they? <laughs> Gotta love it. Time, time to give rather than take. Time to give rather than take. So yeah, I think this is thinking, let's think about our relationships. Let's think about who, what's going on in our relationships, what's important with us and, and for us. And, um, and how we interact, how, what energy we're, we're putting into whatever, and, and what is our driving force there. I'm feeling that surrender to the divine. This is about letting go. This is about how divine masculine needed to control. And those aspects of us needing to know what, why, how, when, where, what's the deal, how long it's going to take, what, how is my involvement, how much do I need to commit, am I going to, <laughs> all of these questions, what does it mean for me, am I going to be a trapped animal, um, can I, you know, still, you know, whatever, it's just all, all the things that keep us from just surrendering, that keeps us from turning our our need to know over and stepping into more of that 
excited for the surprise sort of thing and just knowing that it's going to work out, not needing to know the nuts and bolts of it. Um, surrender to the divine. And actually that was part of our full moon ritual. If you watch the videos, it came up in a few of them that, um, and it was also brought up in the meditation too, um, that we are to write, I surrender, just those two words, I surrender, and then burn it <laughs> for the full moon. If you haven't done it yet, you can still do it for sure. And um, and then write out your concerns, not call them stressors or worries or I'm anxious about, just concerns. It's a nice, easy word with vibrations there. Concern, concerns. What are your concerns? You're going to write out your concerns, burn it all for the full moon. And um, so anyway, that reminds me of that. Surrender to the divine and then believe in the impossible. Again, believe in the impossible, just magic, just the meta, just that it's things aren't coincidental, that, that what you know comes from a deeper place, that how you're guided and how things unfold one way or another has a lot of meaning what you feel, what you, what you desire, what you're passionate about, what you, what your experiences were, what your experiences are turning into, what you were connected to, what you are connected to now and where you see yourself going, yada, 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 all this good stuff. Okay. And then don't let pride stand in your way or keep you back or whatever this way. Don't let pride get in your way. Uh, you know, I'm really, what I'm feeling with this is being real about what you feel, <laughs> being real about what you feel, divine masculine. And instead of being like, nope, I don't feel that way. I feel this way. It's like, no, that's ego. That's control. That's you wanting things to be a, like, I'm over that. I'm not angry or I didn't care anyway, or I don't care that much or, or whatever, or whatever that it may be, you know, fighting feelings, fighting how you feel, you know, denying your own, your own feelings and oh, my ring, I got, I gotta have my, <laughs> my butterfly ring on for my reads. Um, so anyway, so be real about what you feel, be real about what you feel. Um, and that's hundred percent up to you. Of course, your guides or your guardian angel, if you're hopefully close to your guardian angel, if you're not, check out the meditation that I did, body love and meet your guardian angel, golden. Um, don't let pride get in your way. Don't, don't feel the need. Don't recognize, let me hear it, let me hear it. Recognize that accepting how you feel is the key to transmuting your station and evolving and being real about it, being real about it. Um, be real how you, about how you feel. It just keeps like going on and on. So be real about how you feel. That's the last thing there. Um, surrender to the divine time to give rather than take believe in the impossible uh, all very good lessons for this for this uh, divine masculine don't get pride don't let pride get in your way let's admit where we were wrong admit where we may have been insensitive admit where we were being you know, coming from our ego or being really stubborn about how we feel or how we affect how other people feel or how other people affect how we feel. Um, and just, you know, that kind of energy uh, being, being like that. So anyway, there we go with that. Let's see where we go next. Lots to do here. Angels of abundance. Moon all oh we just did moon all <laughs> take that out of there. <laughs> uh Archangel Oracle. Feeling a guess here with Archangel. Yes, so yes here with Archangel Oracle. So let's and I just did pull these, so I don't feel a need to do more smoke for these. Angels, thank you for coming and giving us. Oh, 
Spiritual understanding with Raziel. I am bringing you esoteric information and symbols and helping you understand spiritual truths. So that would be right in alignment with this um, tree of life, uh, with this tree of life reading that we're doing here today. Spiritual understanding, Archangel Raziel. I am bringing you esoteric information and symbols. There is the Metatron's cube. And uh, my phone chiming at the time. What time is it? 4.45. Oh, uh, that's hilarious. Okay. So, yep. <laughs> so pay attention to anything that seems out of the ordinary, special symbology, just teachings for, for different layers and levels of getting into your spirituality, knowing about, you know, esoteric information and, and uh, metaphysics and all that good stuff. You are safe with Archangel Michael. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm protecting you against lower energies and guarding you, your loved ones, and home. So, <laughs> waste no hard time here. Archangel Michael, who I work very, very closely with, coming in to let us know, remind us, listen, when we're, when we're working in, in this new coming month, this new set of timelines going into uh, into March, and especially we have our Stargate that starts on the 3rd. So the 3rd through the 13th is our Stargate. And, you know, those are very, um, those are all about creating, collapsing, and solidifying timelines. So a lot of fast-moving energy usually happens in the Stargate. Um, it ends exactly at the new moon, no coincidence. Um, but anyway, so he's coming in to say there, at this time, um, when, when we really need to work on balancing out our energies, um, let the divine masculine, he's, he's kind of saying like, let's pretend that you just got a bodyguard and for you and your family, your loved ones, your life, everything that you tend to be with divine masculine energy needing to protect, needing to, to feel very um, yeah, protective of and in charge of as a divine, as divine masculine energy, like that type of thing. And he says, let's just pretend that, that you got, you got somebody that is really going to take a lot of that burden off of you. And you're just going to be like, oh, everybody's taken care of every, I don't need to, to, you know, be like, what's going on, what's going on kind of, you know, that kind of energy you are safe taking care and protecting you family everything so just the advice here is when we're thinking about um balancing out and getting into our divine masculine and healing divine masculine and all that stuff paying attention self-care self-love with divine masculine just really you know taking care of that energy it's like let's take a break Let's let's hand some of that over and know that that we are safe regardless. We're taken care of, so that need to just know and control can go. Next, clear your space with Jophiel, Archangel Jophiel. Get rid of clutter, clear the energy around you, and use Feng Shui. Awesome energy, great great idea anyway to do no matter what from the beginning of a month um, or a full moon. So we practically, you know, the way that this, this is working out this with this um, with this year is basically the end of the month, full moon, starting new starting new month with, you know, right after full moon. Um, it'll kind of sh shift a little bit as we go through the year, of course. But um, anyway, clear your space. So uh, do some deep, deep dive cleaning, move furniture, vacuum, sweep, dust. Um, if you have a, a over abundance of laundry, try to get through your laundry, um, whatever, just clear and clean your space, rearrange some stuff, see what needs to go possibly in your environment, what needs to leave. Um, in the environment I'm hearing too, what is old? What are, what are things that just don't need to be there? And where do you have space to put some really cool new stuff that you can, you know, that you can, that you can get. And next Archangel Haniel with passion. Passion. Oh, this is awesome. Passion. I love this card. Trust and follow your renewed passion in your love life and career. So energy is coming through. Like Raziel was saying, 
you're you're going to be getting in divine guidance and inspiration that's going to really tie things together for you and as that happens and as you clear space as you turn over control to michael and and your angelics um you're gonna free up some energy divine masculine to to um to get passionate about the things that that really excite you i see that being you know stuff that's physical stuff that's creative stuff that stuff that you know get your get your brain fired up and, and juicy things going like that so expect for that to happen we've been getting those messages about creative energies and stuff like that coming in um so this is definitely saying divine masculine you're gonna be um passion fire fiery energy with this card with Haniel, and she's just saying look this there's different fires that you've had all your life if you're in different things that interest you some of those things that have interested you have just been a waste of time total waste of time maybe you've enjoyed them but have they really advanced you your evolution do they do they um put are they bricks to your ascension or have they been just maybe keeping you from your ascension even though you may have liked it whatever and so so what i'm seeing here are just these different piles these different embers um like piles of embers or, or little fires and just different things that that we can be um into over our over life and um and the ones that have gone down because we've moved on we're not too too into that and the ones that are bigger that still take a lot of our energy so we're asked to we're asked to assess how much energy does it take to keep this fire going that what that we're of this thing that we're into so let's say um sports video games um uh um uh, uh social media um oh gosh there's so many different things that they could be but but those are the, like the ones that just you know come to mind and and what what there how big is this how big are these fires how much energy do you put and really what are you getting back from that what what is advancing you and what are you still holding on to just out of obligation habit nostalgia um not wanting you know feeling like i still need to be sort of normal so i'm still into this even though I feel like if I'm doing it or when I'm doing it or when I'm watching it or when I'm into it or when I'm, you know, part of it with people that I'm just like, I'd rather be watching, you know, spiritual documentaries or yoga or meditating or watching videos on um, like this or, you know, anything like that, that, that really is going to feed your soul. Okay, next career transition with Archangel Samuel, Divine Masculine, your life purpose is triggering a blessed career change or an evolution a great evolution in your identity what you want to do as far as you know your how you how you earn your life how you earn your living how you pay for your for your sustenance your food your energy and where that 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 money that gain comes from to pay for that what where that energy is derived from because we have to think about you know what we do with ourselves and our lives and our energy is paying for the food that's paying for the house that's paying for the whatever that feeds our life that puts our that puts the 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 energy in us um and gosh this is a tough one i'm even feeling like you know if you've been rejecting filing for unemployment or getting government government help you know with the pandemic and stuff like that because you don't want to be attached to that energy that is very understandable and what i'm getting here is you know don't let pride get in your way don't decide that that a certain type of of helper coming from from some places is a bad thing with bad energy it is if you decide that it is um but it's also but i'm also hearing it's it's one thing to to use a helping hand when you're down and you need some help but it's another thing to just hold on to that hand well after you've been able to get up on your own that sort of thing when you're you're more capable so there's that there's something there with that and then um and then yes just just the the development of 
of what your where you're going with your with your passions and what that's going to change for you in your everyday life and how you how you uh, manifest money, how you, what you put your energy into. So I'm feeling um, our divine masculine sides are going to say, you know what? I need, I need this to be more than just earning a paycheck, more than just going through the motions, even if I do make really good money. And I've been there before. I've made great money doing things. And I'm just like, I can't do this anymore. I can't do this job because of the nature of the energy attached to what I have to do for this money or what's associated for this money. And it's just not jiving with what where I'm at or where I'm going. And I know that. So I have to let that go, even if it seems like, this great job and everybody else would be like, are you insane? And you would be like, yeah, but I just, it, it does, it's not good for me. Um, and it might, and people might just go, but it's a great job. Anybody would love that job. And you'd be like, yeah, but it's just not good for me. You know, not everybody's going to get it. Not everybody's going to understand, but what's important is, is that you do. And that, um, and that you take the time to sort that out for yourself. And that may be coming up here because the status quo just, you know, let's be real. Let's be reals about our feels, right? <laughs> let's be reals about our feels. Okay. So I'm hearing we're done with the archangels. Thank you. Thank you. Archangels. Amazing messages there. Let's take a couple more of our oracles out because we did have several possibility. I heard that we were going to get, to, or we're going to dive into these other ones. It was just a matter of placement. Let's get into arc and I'm sorry, um, angels of abundance, unless I go through them and we just never get yeses because that's possible, but I thought that's what we were doing. Um, okay, buggy, really. <laughs> A little aggressive there. Um, no. Hidden worlds oracle for divine masculine. Yes. Ooh, ears are popping. Ears are popping, so I'll yawn. Ears will pop. I'll get ringing in my ears. I'll get chills. I'll start shaking. You'll be getting a little shaky, depending on what the energy is, who's around, and what influences are coming in, and just all that good stuff. I am hearing. Let's get some smoke for this. So our hidden worlds oracle, one of my absolute favorites, by Lucy Cavendish. This is the hidden worlds oracle highly recommend them if you're so guided really helps connect you guess what with the other worlds <laughs> with the other worlds all righty let's just go through some some smoke here clear the cards clear the energy Okay. That's better. That's some real smoke. <laughs> it's like either barely on or. <sighs> okay. And one last one. All righty. All righty. All righty. All righty. All right. Let's do it. Oh, there we go. I think you got one here. Got a hot one finally. <laughs> oh. Nope. Oh, yep. <laughs> Definitely. Looks like we have two. Two. That was funny. Let's go with our first one. Homeward Traveler. Card number 21. Completion, Reunion, Return. This was the card that was uh, popping out that I was guided to pull out. Homeward Traveler. And then the card that was... Woo! coming out the tree of illumination oh as we're doing a tree a tree spread the tree of illumination card number seven truth revelations understanding oh my god 
yes, it's so good. I could not, I could not plan that better myself. Oh my goodness, so excited. <laughs> I know I'm such a nerd with this stuff. I don't care. <laughs> such a nerd. Okay, let's go to card number, I'm hearing card number seven. We're in the sevens here, 721. Um, sevens have been coming up a lot for me, 777. Seven, seven. There was this 7777 seven, seven, seven universal day on the 25th. Um, and I really can't remember all the details about it, but it was a thing a couple of days ago. And it was a 7777 seven, seven, seven day um, just placement and the day of the month and all this stuff added up to that, <clears throat> to that number. Oh, we have a little bit of, okay. Had a couple little fruit flies in there. <clears throat> okay. Uh, the tree of illumination. Oh, I love this. Truth, revelations, understanding, pages 48 and 49 from the Hidden Worlds Oracle by Lucy Cavendish. I have three of her oracles and I absolutely love them. So highly recommend. Okay, there are within this world certain trees which have qualities that are unique and magical. All trees have a little of this magic, but in some the power accumulates and rests and rises until the tree becomes a part of a sacred place in which great healing, revelations, understanding, and moments of insight can take place. They have been many among the great divine ones of the world, Odin and Yggdrasil, Buddha and the tree, and this tree is one of one such as those. You are now invited to step into the energies of this tree and receive the wisdom it wishes to offer you. In your own world, make time to connect with all trees. But in this moment, gazing upon this card, know that there dwells within this tree a great spirit who wishes now to share with you the potent magic of the realms some would call fairies. This shining one now invites you in as you enter and lay down beneath the branches. Light will fall upon you and nurture you and become part of you so that you can know the truth of any circumstance that has troubled you. Take this worry to the tree of illumination and when you still yourself and listen and go to the trees, you'll return with all you seek to know. Oh my goodness, that is so beautiful and true and totally true. And illumination, it is within the, the branches of the trees that knowledge and wisdom will be found. Do not ask yourself anymore. Ask the trees and the answer will be yours. Oh, I love that. I'm going to read that again. It is within the branches of the trees that knowledge and wisdom will be found. Do not ask yourself anymore. Ask the trees and the answer will be yours. So connect with Gaia, connect with the trees, connect with the fairies. They are there and extending their hand. Um, and that's a really, like I was talking about earlier with divine, you know, it's typically divine feminine that's easier to, to lean into that sort of divine feels. Um, <clears throat> whereas men are a little different when it comes to that. <laughs> Excuse me. I have three separate drinks here, by the way, <laughs> like always. So anyway, um, so this is this is saying, you know, to really evolve, to really balance out these energies, we need to seek the truth and we need to go beyond ourselves for the truth because the truth and our truth can be two different things. Our perspective of what is real, what is the truth, what is all is typically extraordinarily limited and, and very skewed in perception because we, we have, until we broaden our perception and our understanding of things and we start opening up the doors and the gates and the windows um, and, and, 
smashing down walls that keep us in a certain frame of mind? Do we only have a certain reference point, a certain perspective to look through? Um, so this card is really asking our divine masculine sides to extend and expand our acknowledgement of what is real and what can be true and what is the truth and accept that it's so much bigger than what we what we've given ourselves permission to accept. Okay, now let's go to card number 21. Homeward Traveler, Completion, Reunion, Return. So I'm going to give you one last look at the tree, the tree of illumination. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful energy here, tree of illumination. And then here we are with Homeward Bound. And I, I want you to think which way is, which way is, are we going there? It's homeward bound going in or coming towards us? Okay. Perspective, right? So here we go. Completion, reunion, return. You have reached the stage of your journey where much of the hard work has been done. You have traveled far and gone through many tests and dangers. There have been moments where you feared you would not make it and wondered whether this journey was worth facing tr the trials and finding a way through the obstacles. You have stopped so many times along the way, but something within your soul called you onwards. And so you kept moving in the direction of your goals, of ascension, of the truth, of healing, of clearing, of greater knowing. There was much risk and now comes the reward for you are being guided through the last stages of the journey and there can be no longer and there can no longer be any doubt that you are a dear friend heading in the direction of your true. This home may not be a place or even people. It could be a state of being, a place of balance and love that is found within. It could be a place in the outside world, a home you have longed for and now are close to creating. It could be that you have been through many struggles and suffered and that now there will come a time of peace, of harmony within. You are returning to love to a place where you can most truly be yourself. And this will bring reunion, completion, and a sense that you have found where you are meant to be. Illumination. I am finding my where to way. I am finding my way to where I am meant to be. Home is within me. Oh, these cards are such good feels, aren't they? So, <laughs> so, 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 where do we go from here with this? We have reached the stage of our journey where much of the hard work has been done. You've traveled far and gone through many tests and dangers, many trials. It's been a difficult journey, but you've kept going. Why? Because you're, you're literally, for me, if I'm answering that question, I literally cannot stop. I can, st I can take a rest. Yes. Like they say here, you've stopped, you've, taken rest you've not moved for a little bit because you're beat up or whatever but then you continue on then you get up and you go because you're being pulled forward you're being pulled to that to that inner that inner destiny within yourself where what is destiny destiny is you that is your destiny to find the place within you that where it all the seed of your of your tree of life basically and why you're here that is home that is that is destiny that is fate fate is your is is a follow through on destiny and destiny is you um learning um, and, and finding your home, finding, finding you inside. What is that? And all these other cards that we got into before this really talks about the things in ways that we, that we need to look at stuff in order to get there. It's like drawing a map to get home. And, and it's like, Dorothy, you, you, it's been you and within you the whole time. You've gone on this great adventure. You've gone to another world. Um, 
and you've and you figure it out along the way that that you had the power all along and so that's the real that's the lesson there and this is saying you're being pulled closer and closer to that place within you that's going to uh that's going to be that that inner peace that I, I went I like that climbing Mount Everest like all of that all of that hard work was to get me to the destination but that again is within you that's what we talk about divine union like the 222 portal was the divine union portal and and a lot of people go oh divine union that's me and somebody else divine union no <laughs> divine union is you and you you and your soul you and you and your spirit you and your body you and your energy you and your you and your um, inner child you and your all that good stuff you and you that's divine union everything that comes after that is soul family connections and yes another form of divine union but true divine union with others on a on a very um uh level space and playing kind of playing field where where there isn't the bullshit that we deal with in the 3d matrix with other people lies deception hiding um triggers issues all the stuff that keeps people truly from connecting and and more separate from like okay we know each other to we know each other and we're locked in because we understand that we're same same and we're just seeing that we're just a little bit different in frequency and the closer we can get in frequency the easier we can we can blend and lock in together and not have friction not have issues not have triggers to cause rifts to cause people to separate or to not to, to for the polarities within them the literal energy inside of them when we're talking on a quantum physics level here when we are attracted or 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 um or reject or have that feelings of rejecting energies of other things it's because the polarities of the of what's going on inside of us are either very um in alignment or not or the opposite and um, so those are things to, to think about and consider. Okay, so moving on here. So we did that. Let's see if we're going to do either of these. This is the Heart of Fairy Oracle and Angels of Abundance. So we're getting a no on Angels of Abundance. And Heart of Fairy Oracle, we're going to go here. Well, feeling a yes here. There we go. Starting to turn into a yes. And if we want to have some fun and see it go real fast, I'm just going to hold on to it here. Because the more I hold on to it, the more it starts, it'll start going round and round. And I could even like hold it by the tippy tips and really ask it like, is this a yes? Is this the one I should use? And it'll get like really strong. <laughs> And go really big and start getting really yeah i'm gonna do a video on pendulums um and working with them connecting with them and all that good stuff but and then it can even you know start going faster and faster and faster just to you know the the more that i kind of push push it with is this the is this the answer it's just gonna be like yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. this is the answer so anyway let's slow it down Slow it down and this is fun. It feels good. Okay. Heart of Fairy Oracle. Let's get some fire. I hear let's get some fire. Fire and smoke from Sage and Palo Santo. Heart of Fairy Oracle by Brian Froud, by the way. This is what the back of the deck looks like. Stuff going on there. Okay. And this deck is really, really very extremely connected to the fate, very magical. We just heard from um, in that other one about being connected to the fairies with the, um, the tree of illumination. 
Um, and definitely <laughs> the more our divine masculine sides or aspects or people can connect with Gaia and the fairies because they're very one and the same. Um, and there, and when we're talking about what's interesting about elements is that the element of tech is not, is not part of the fae world. It's part of the human world and the human dimension, not the fairy, the fairy world that we, that we're connected to. <laughs> Card number 37, the fairy of naughtiness. <laughs> the fairy of naughtiness. And, um, but even though, but because tech is part of, part of the world, it is, it is obviously been something that the Fae have had to, you know, deal with and, and, and get to know from a, an other world perspective. And, and as if, as if humans weren't different enough, then that's the, a whole new component that comes into it. Anyway, next card. Card number six, the queen of owls. <laughs> Gotta love it. Owls are definitely a thing for me. Um, <laughs> big time. Okay, so we got two cards, two cards with the, um, the heart of fairy oracle. Let's go to the, the uh, fairy of naughtiness. Card number 37 first is what I'm hearing. Tricksters, she's definitely a trickster. <laughs> Yeah, what is she? Oh, a sprite? Yes, yeah, she's a sprite. Okay, the fairy of naughtiness. Um, and that's what the book looks like. This is the Heart of Fairy Oracle. I don't even think you could buy this. I had to get it secondhand, like off of eBay or something. Very difficult oracle deck to get. I think there was a very limited amount of them printed. And they're so if you go, if you look into the Heart of Fairy and the Fairies Oracle by Brian Froud, um, you'll you'll see that pe there's people that can't or don't they they just can't keep these decks. They get with the they can't handle the the fay the fairy energy. There's something there. It's really really interesting. It just made me want it more. But it was just like and and I, but once I got into it, I understood it's a whole, once you start working with and, and being part of that, of that realm, the world takes on a very different dimension. I don't know how else to put that. It's just a very, like, it's almost like instead of seeing the world in a like boxed way, you see it with like, with these, with a curve to it. Um, again, I'm not sure how else to explain that, uh, magic on both sides of the spectrum comes through really strongly, so it can get very intense, but not, not to worry, it's not like these are bad things or anything, I'm just telling you, like, it's one thing to be a participant in a reading like this, it's another thing to have the this deck. So before you're like, oh, we're pretty deck. I want to go and get it. Do your research about it, please. Is all I'm saying because it, it really it's more than it's more than a normal a, a regular thing when it comes to these brand fraud decks. And again, you could do a YouTube search or do article searches when people talk about these decks and really the portals that it opens up to the Fae and your interaction and responsibility in that in that world and realm um, being a part of that. Okay. Not getting too serious here about the fae. Here we go with the fairy of naughtiness. Um, the fairy of naughtiness. Okay, lighten up mischief and mis, uh, misrule. Uh, sometimes you must have to be naughty. <laughs> Just being naughty isn't being, now being, sorry. Now being naughty isn't being bad. Being naughty can be a wonderful release. The fairy of naughtiness asks you to step outside your boundaries for a moment and do something unexpected. She dares you, well, you can see by the way she's looking at you, to change the energy of a situation by doing the one thing that will tilt the universe just a little bit. Sometimes you can change that energy just by thinking. Mm -hmm. Very true. 
the simplest, most dangerous form of alchemy, just thinking. Um, observe too that she is connected above and below. The energy of the universe runs through her and connects her to everything. She is part of the universal glue that holds everything together. If you don't acknowledge her, if you ignore her, you may become the target of her own naughtiness. She's very good at stealing things, losing laws, misplacing important letters and important thoughts. So when it looks like it's going to be one of those days when little things go wrong and circumstances become predicaments, acknowledge the fairy of naughtiness and get her on your side again. She just wants to So uh, this has definitely been a theme coming through for this time period for the full moon for for uh, March in general for Pisces season, the inner child um, coming through I know we didn't get the child card because there is a child card we didn't get the child card we got the child we got the, the fairy of naughtiness which is which even is even my which is even more um, potent than the child. Um, in the sense that what what we're saying, what she's saying here is, is that it's it's again it's about balance. It's like if you're too serious, if you're if you're just focus, 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 working too hard, not not taking, not nurturing yourself, not taking care of yourself. If you're just stacking too much up for yourself, if you're in too much of a control issue type of thing, and if you're like, if you want to picture. The, the, the kid who runs in with a ball and a mitt to his dad and says, let's play catch. And the dad goes, no, I'm busy working. You know, I'll go find somebody else to play with. You know, I'm too busy. I've got stuff important, adult stuff to do. That sort of thing. That'll get the, that'll get the, the fairy of naughtiness to start, you know, making daddy's time a wee bit harder to try to remind him that he's way out of balance, way out of balance and not enjoying life. Real simple. She's like, it's real simple. If you don't enjoy life and you're way too serious, even if it's like spiritual work and stuff, and she's like literally talking to me right now, she's like, if you're, if you know, if, there's nothing, there's nothing great about being a workaholic. That's very out of balance energy. And I get it. I've been that way all of my life. I cannot help it. It's just the way that I've been very serious, very driven, very work related and oriented. It was very difficult for me when I was sick with fibromyalgia and I couldn't work and I just, I couldn't do much of anything over time, over time, over time, over and over and over again for my adult life, you know? And so, uh, so I think that like there's an overcompensation of when I couldn't, so I do, when I do extra when I can, it's almost impossible to get me to stop and relax and just not work but I'm also so passionate about all this stuff and everything that I do. So it's like, well, why wouldn't I be doing that? Like, why would it just be wasting time doing some whatever thing, you know, it's just like, but then again, she's like, but you've got to do some fun, whatever stuff, you know, it's like, it's not all, you know, it's not all being, you know, the scientists, uh, you know, it, it, their needs you've got to leave. You got to do, you have to have that balance. And, and so she's reminding us of that. She's reminding us of, of, um, of, you know, taking things too seriously. You know, not this, remember this, um, there was this part about don't let pride get in your way. Um, is sort of that is sort of like that don't don't let pride get in your way like saying you know don't let yourself don't let seriousness don't let control like we need to um uh... 
so I guess it's a good it's a good indicator like how have your days been have they been hectic have you been having like tough days with stuff a couple days ago it was like full moon energy but it was just like one thing after another um as well so I think there's a little bit of the fairy of naughtiness in there trying to get me to and it did it did get comical it got to a point where I was just like this is hilarious this is pretty funny um but uh anyway so there we go with her and then number six the queen of owls the queen of owls physical healing wholeness and wellness uh, this is reminding me, reminding me how much I love this card. When I when I saw that there was a call, a card called the Queen of Well, uh, the Queen of Owls, I was like, shut up right now. There's a Queen of Owls, and just look at her, look at those those wings are uh, coming off of her head. Let's focus. Goodness, there we go. I think. Anyway, it's just beautiful. Please look it up online. Um, the Heart of Fairy Oracle by Brian Froud, F R O U D, uh, B R I A N. And this is the card number six, the Queen of Owls. And the other one was card number 37, the Fairy of Naughtiness. I can't even say that without kind of giggling. So the Queen of Owls, physical healing, wholeness, and wellness. This is the bright queen of physical healing. She's, but uh, when the physical body is unbalanced or in pain it can be difficult to find a connection to anything other than pain or disease that's true relationships can falter and fail when all your attention pivots to dealing with pain when your physical body becomes the only thing you can focus on turn to this bright and gentle being she radiates wholeness and wellness and can help you find the inner strength you need to come through disease into healing and health again. The pain is real, the disease is real, but the power to heal is real and within you as well, most definitely. Concentrate on her image and reconnect with the healing energies of fairy. Oh my God, I love it. Look at that picture there. So Brian, not only he does he's the artist but he also is very you know brings out the messages but she, but he worked on this with this with this one it was his wife brian and wendy froud with the with the uh fairies oracle he worked with um uh jessica Macbeth, and she writes she wrote the book and she was the one she it was just a really cool story about how these oracles were done but he's every single Every single uh, one of these art is a painting, a really big painting actually. And he just, um, he channels through the artwork. He's done artwork on um, like Lord of the Rings and Labyrinth and all sorts of, of movies. He's just like the predominant, like go-to guy for, for the fairy, anything. So, <laughs> The Queen of Owls, let's get back to her. The Queen of Owls, um, physical healing, wholeness, wellness. Well, what can I say? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, if you're if you're in any kind of chronic pain, issues with energy, um, addictions. Just any kind of unwellness, any kind like if you sway like on my questionnaires for what I do, it's like, do you take regular medications? Well, if you do, then what is that about? <clears throat> I think that our society has gotten really used to like, well, you just take stuff for stuff because that's what you do. Um, you shouldn't have to. <laughs> you shouldn't have to. Um, your body is extremely capable of, I mean, it's it's set to not need anything but a really good diet, good energy, good sleep, a good environment, um, passionate work, good people in your life. And if things are, are like that, you know, there's not, there isn't a reason to be on medications for things because your body is taking care of itself and you're taking care of it. And so 
the queen of owls is is basically she's coming in and she's saying you need to think about how you feel and how you should feel and and to allow yourself to be guided to better health and wellness to clearing out energy to working with your um with your guides and guardians to figure out what it is that needs to happen what you need to do um on your own or working with somebody like myself to help you with that kind of thing um and so just to allow yourself to to be patient to call out to the queen of owls and let her send her guidance and her energy to you and you'll get the you'll get the answers that you need but you it's like what she said you know pain is very real illness and disease is very very real but the power to take control of your energy and heal yourself is very very real trust me i did it for myself i do it for people all and help people with that all the time all the time i do this i want to do it more but i do it and and it works every single time because the person is understands that they are that they're healing you know themselves it's like you want to go you want to go someplace and you get on a bus and the bus driver takes you to that place. And so that's how like I work. You want to get to wholeness and wellness and being free of pain, illness, and disease, you get on my bus and I take you there. So, and same thing with the with the queen of the owls or the queen of owls is, you know, saying we, it's your decision always ultimately to be in wellness or illness and your energy is your wellness or your illness and that to deny that is to allow and accept passivity of your own being okay so divine masculine time to allow for the space to to step into that childlike energy and let the fairy of naughtiness guide you if you so choose just remember what it's like to be a little naughty child and just being silly and and not taking life so seriously and enjoying life loving life seeing the miraculous wonderment of life connecting to gaia will always help you there being around children will always help you with that as well, to remind you of what it's like to, to have that, that fun, naughty, childlike energy. Um, and the queen of owls, and if you weren't a naughty child, or if you if you were like so by the rules, which I was, like I was not a naughty, naughty child, like it was like seven before like I lied to my mom and she just about had a heart attack. Like it was not, a, I'm an earth angel, what can I say? <laughs> So I wasn't a naughty child. And when I was naughty, it was so like, it was so not like, okay at all. My mother was also pretty scary, very strict. And she did not mind using things to hit me with. So being any kind of naughty other than just my precocious self that was always challenging her and, and the way that she always twisted reality was naughty enough so i didn't really push it by doing extra naughty things so it, it does tickle me to think of you know to think in my mind of being naughty or you know doing little you know harmless little naughty things with even like my cats or whatever just being just being like really silly basically i i i, I equate naughty with silly and i know that that's maybe odd but to me that's just kind of the same kind of vibrations anyway and then queen of owls okay let's move on because i know this is already long but it is what it is like i said it is what it is um let me get some water here